retarded. I find that ironic that after I make a video about games being art, I decide to review this. Lollipop Chainsaw is perhaps the dumbest thing I have ever seen. And I've seen the first four scary movie movies, not another teen movie, disaster movie, epic movie, and Meet the Spartans. The fact that I still have a functioning bane is nothing short of a... Miracle. Lollipop Chainsaw is another zombie game, and I'll tell you something. At this rate, there will be more zombie games than there will be zombies in an actual zombie apocalypse. This zombie crap needs to slow down. It's turned something awesome into a cheap commodity. Ever since Dead Rising and Left 4 Dead came out, the zombie genre game exploded. But those two games are really the only ones who did it correctly. At least in my opinion. But of course, everyone else had to get their hands on that undead cache with zombie add-on DLC expansions. I need another ton of monograph Kleenex tissues, have the slaves push out another zombie expansion, and don't put too much money into it. Can't waste money on frivolities, you know? This game is a collaboration between Goichi Suda, aka Suda51, creator of games like No More Heroes and James Gunn, who wrote the Dawn of the Dead 2004 remake and both Scooby-Doo live-action movies. That makes way too much sense. Now when I say that this game is stupid, I do not mean that the game is bad. But the concept it revolves around is stupid. I don't mind zombie games, even though I think that the genre needs to stop being shoved down our throats, I love them. But I feel that Lollipop Chainsaw did this genre wrong. First off, the graphics do not look good for 2012. They tried going for a realistic look, but they messed it up with the coloring. They went with realistic textures, but then messed up the contrast and then cell shaded everything with a very, very thin black outline. They tried to go with a comic book look, but the end result makes it look like they didn't know where they wanted to go with it. They could have gone with realistic and would have been fine, they could have gone with cartoonish and would have been fine, but just mixed together looks kind of off-putting to me. The animation is pretty terrible too. Juliet's animations are fine when you're playing the game, but during cutscenes the characters just seem to flail about. And I'm not talking about the zombies, I mean the characters that are still alive have really bad animations. They're animated in ways that look like something we'd see from a game in the previous generation of consoles. The music is good, they license some songs from the 50s and 80s, but one thing that bothers me is that Tara Strong voices Juliet. And I I feel that her talent was wasted on this character. She's voiced Bubbles from the Powerpuff Girls, Ben Tennyson from Ben 10, Raven from Teen Titans, Timmy Turner from The Fairly Odd Parents, Ember McLean from Danny Phantom, Harley Quinn from Batman Arkham City, and Twilight Sparkle from My Little Pony French Biz Magic. Do you see my point here? And here she plays the stereotypical vapid airheaded cheerleader. It feels like it's an insult to her talent, especially knowing that she's voiced such great characters in the past. The type of game is a hack and slash, but the control layout doesn't make much sense to me, and if you have a PlayStation, just translate the controls over for yourself. A is a low chainsaw attack, X is for kicks and punches, or as the game calls it, pom-pom attacks, Y is for high chainsaw attacks, and B is for a jumping kind of dodge. Usually in this type of game, you have a jump that's A, low attack which is X, and high attack that's Y. And you have a range attack which is B, while dodge is a shoulder button. And as typical with these types of action games, the shoulders and D-pad do various things. And this all translates to combat, which is to say... Uh, there's been other games that have done it better. What you do is string combos together to defeat zombies. Sounds good, but I think the combat doesn't feel right. The game tries to emphasize that you need to use the weak pom-pom attacks to make zombies groggy so you can decapitate them easier. But it takes 5 to 6 hits to make a single zombie groggy. While 3 to 4 high chainsaw attacks will not only kill a zombie, but will damage others as well. Compared to games like Bayonetta or Batman Arkham Asylum or Arkham City, where combat just flows from one enemy to another or encompasses a wider attack radius, Lollipop Chainsaw feels primitive in comparison, and it's newer than Bayonetta or the Batman Arkham series or even the Force Unleashed games. Lollipop Chainsaw feels a lot more like Darksiders when it comes to combat, but that game is marginally more fun. You can buy combos with what little money you get, and the combos are a pain in the ass to pull off because it just doesn't flow from one thing to the next like other games. The combat is also slow, so you really can't match the buttons to pull off combos efficiently. Again, the Batman games, Bayonetta, and Darksiders, you can do this because the combat flows quickly. I feel like I have to wait for Juliet to finish one attack before inputting another command, compared to Bayonetta where I can just input a string of combos and she'll pull them off seamlessly. And what game would be complete without quick time events? I swear, those things are required by law now. There's times where you'll find blue glowing zombies that you could put Nick, Juliet's boyfriend who's a severed head, on so he could control it. It's a quick time event that's longer than it should be and is generally pointless as Juliet has shown that she's capable of doing whatever it is that you have Nick do. Then there's little mini games that you have to accomplish, like beheading zombies so that their head makes it into a basketball hoop in a certain time limit, or shooting baseballs at zombies, and of course, if you fail these mini games, it's game over. Just why? That's a poor design choice. And don't worry, this game has plenty more. Another stupid choice is that you can't drop down but actually have to jump off of certain things. I jumped on top of a bus, but I just can't walk off of it. I actually have to press the jump button again to jump off the bus. It's redundant. 
Another bad design choice is that you can't backtrack. There's only one way to go, and that's forward. There will be doors that will close behind you to prevent you from going backwards. One of the other examples is when I started next to a shop, bought stuff, then went out, killed a few zombies, got some more coins, and went back to buy more stuff, but there was a door blocking my path. There's almost no compensation for killing zombies either. You get like one coin per zombie kill, 10 coins for saving a classmate, and you only get enough coins to buy one item at a time. The only way to get money efficiently is to replay the levels multiple times. And it just leaves you asking yourself, why? Oh wait, I can answer that because this game was made in Japan. Yes, you have to grind for money if you want to buy anything. I know that someone is going to say to use the star soul mode meter thing and you can get more, but I'm one of those I might need it later type of gamers. It makes you invincible and instantly kills zombies for a short period of time, but it takes a while to build up, so it's a use it wisely type of thing, otherwise it's wasted. And I know that this is a cultural thing as the Japanese love grinding and repetitiveness in their games. Looking at other reviews of this game, the Japanese reviews loved it while American reviewers were more critical, citing that combat and gameplay is boring. What I'm about to show you is where I just rolled my eyes, and this is where I wanted to give up. In the stadium area, you get locked in a small section with zombies with no legs crawling under the small gaps of the doors. I'm just standing still, jumping and using the crawling zombie finishing move to one-shot them. And it's not as simple as it sounds. You jump in the air, press the low chainsaw attack, and then the camera pops up to a different angle where you match the button until the zombie is cut in half. And you do this 15 times. This is not fun at all. This is very boring and very repetitive and each section you get locked in shows a counter of how many zombies you have to kill before you can move on. Why can't I skip areas? Why can't I explore? It's like being on a rail shooter that you manually move along. I was already bored shitless at this point, but then this glitch just pissed me off where I had to put the game down for a while. During the zombie baseball minigame, Nick has to make it to home plate three times, and on the third run when he hits third base with a quarter of his health, the zombie body he's controlling just dies unexpectedly and it's game over. The game is also pretty short, about 4-6 to six hours long and the stages are linear hallways. There's almost no exploration anywhere. The most exploration you get is when you come out of a hallway and when you're supposed to go right, you go left instead and find a lollipop like 2 feet away. Then there's the writing and I could actually feel my brain starting to atrophy while listening to this story. First off, the dialogue is annoying, and I mean annoying. I'm talking Bubsy 3D annoying. I have never wanted to mute the sound in a recent game as much as I wanted to here. When the characters cuss, it sounds very forced and out of place. It's like when a child hears their parents use a swear word for the first time, and they try sprinkling it into whatever conversation they're saying. As I said earlier, Tara Strong's talent is completely wasted here as she voices this very annoying character. Her teacher sounds like Mojo Jojo after breathing in a tank of helium and comes off as a stereotypical perverted old Japanese man. Her boyfriend Nick is really the only tolerable character and acts as the straight man. He's very accepting of what's happened as if it's a normal everyday thing. The story itself is like a children's pop-up book written by Tim Burton, and no, you're not allowed to think that's cool. It's Juliet's 18th birthday because if she was 17, then the jokes would make the game considered very inappropriate. So she goes to school to meet her boyfriend only to find out that the school is overrun with zombies. What happens is that a goth kid named Swan opens up a rift between Earth and Hell, causing people to turn into zombies. However, it's revealed that Swan did this to get his revenge on everyone who picked on and bullied him. It's also hinted that he had a crush on Juliet. So remember, don't bully your classmates around, otherwise one of them may try to start the zombie apocalypse. If you save all of the students, you get the good ending, but if one of them dies, you get the bad ending where Juliet's mother's a zombie. The jokes are incredibly Japanese, like when Juliet shows her teacher Nick's severed head, she turns around and bends over while of course wearing her cheerleader outfit which consists of a very short mini skirt. Or when the teacher falls into her cleavage and it happens twice within 90 seconds. For a game that's geared towards American audiences, I don't think that they're going to get the jokes unless they eat, sleep, breathe, and drink anime and their diet consists of ramen noodles and Pocky. I'm dead serious, I didn't get any of the jokes and if I did, I thought they were stupid or immature or both. I'm not saying that you can't have an off-the-wall wacky game with absurd humor. Lots of games have done it. God Hand for One is a perfect example. It's got Japanese-styled humor and I found it funny. Lollipop Chainsaw just comes off as trying way too hard to be funny to me. I can understand it being a parody of zombie games, but it fails. A parody is a joke that references something that's not funny and makes it funny. It feels like this is one big in-joke that only it knows. This is one of those rare moments where I have to look at other people's reviews of the game because I feel like I was just missing something. A lot of people have cited that the combat is slow, but have said that it's not supposed to be like Bayonetta or God of War but more like old arcade beat-em-ups like Double Dragon, Final Fight, or Streets of Rage. 
and unfortunately, I'm not a fan of those. I admit that they're good, but they're not my type of game. And there's only a few that I'll willingly play, like the Simpsons arcade game or the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle ones. Some people have said that you need to go in with that arcade beam up mindset, and that's all well and good. But what was advertised feels like a different product than what I got. Some people have said that you need to replay the levels to get the full enjoyment out of the game, and that doesn't make much sense to me. That's like saying the only way to get the full enjoyment out of washing dishes is to repeatedly do it. Lollipop Chainsaw feels more like a chore, and that's when it stops feeling like a game. Although it didn't really feel like a game to me from the start. I love Left 4 Dead and Dead Rising. They have a more classic type of zombie apocalypse. Even though Left 4 Dead has mutant zombies, it feels real as at any point you can be swarmed with zombies from out of nowhere. And while there is a point A to point B path, it feels a lot more open and gives you a real sense of danger. Dead Rising is probably the most fun out of all the zombie games out there. It's completely open, allows for full exploration of the game world. And killing zombies in those two games is a lot more fun, because you can be creative with how you kill them or just shoot them in the head. In Lollipop Chainsaw, you have a chainsaw which is awesome, but it takes four hits to kill a zombie instead of just mowing through them. I'm really just sitting there counting each hit until a zombie dies. One, two, three, dead. One, two, three, dead. One, two, three, dead. One, two, three, dead. <sighs> Lollipop Chainsaw is a good game, but it's just one of those games that you either love or you hate. And I fall into the latter category. I can see why people like it, but it's just not my type of game.